Okay, so let's dive into Charlie's training so we can stay consistent at home. We are going to reward Charlie when he does the commands that we ask him to do. That way we can create a reward history for him listening to us at home. And we're gonna use these tools to follow through in case he decides he doesn't wanna do the command when we ask him to. That way he knows that training happens at home, not just here at the facility. So let's start by talking about his prong collar. So with his prong collar, how you're going to put it on and take it off Charlie, you are going to hold a prong steady and then you're gonna push this link parallel and push it down and through. It's about technique, not strength. And then you're going to squeeze this prong together. You're gonna to put it around Charlie. Squeeze these two prongs so that they line up like this. You can't pull it through the top. You do have to squeeze them into the prong above it. So when he's wearing this collar, he's also gonna have his remote collar on, but we're gonna talk about this one first. You're gonna attach the leash to the D-ring. And when you use it, when he is, for example, in the heel position, heel means walk next to us on a loose leash. But if he gets distracted or excited, we're gonna give him a reminder on how to walk next to us. So heel means walk next to us on a loose leash. If he decides to walk ahead, we're gonna say no give a little tug of the leash and then remind him heel. This is for us to follow through with our commands and let him know that training happens with us two at home, not just here at the training facility. So no, pop, heel. So we tell him no, that action is incorrect, here's a correction, and then do the command correctly. We're also going to reward Charlie when he is in the correct position. So when he's walking next to us, good heel, reward with treats, praise, and petting to let him know that he's doing a good job and give him that positive feedback. We also have his remote collar. So how to turn the remote collar on. His collar has a red dot. That is a magnetic key on the remote. He has a matching red dot. We're gonna touch the two together and that's gonna turn his collar on. You're gonna see a green light flash. Green means it's on, charged, and ready to go. On the back of his remote, we have the on off button. We're gonna push and hold that until the screen lights up. And we're gonna focus on the black S button. So right now, Charlie is at level 20 out of 100. This is enough to get his attention, but it shouldn't be too uncomfortable for Charlie. So when we're walking him and he's in the heel position, if he gets distracted or tries to walk ahead of us because that will lead to pulling, we're gonna say no, push the black S button, and then remind him to heel. No, heel, no, heel. We're also gonna use that with the prong collar. That way we know he understands what our expectations are in the heel command what the walking is. So 85 to 90 percent of your walk should be in the heel command. The other 10 to 15 percent you can tell him free. That's his time to sniff and explore at the end of the leash. He's not in a structured command but again I recommend having, heel, having him heel majority of the walk. Then of course when he's doing the correct command or when he's doing what you're asking him to do we're going to reward that with praise, petting, and treats. So let's move on to sit. Sit means stay until he is told free so you can have him sit at doors or sit on walks when you stop. You'll see examples of this throughout his video coming up. So when we walk up to a door, we're gonna tell him sit. As we open the door, if we want him to stay, we're gonna remind him sit. Instead of having him remember another word like stay, we just repeat the command and let him know, hey, I want you to continue sitting until I tell you free or heal. So then we open the door, we can either tell him free and walk through the door together, or we can tell him sit go through the door and then tell him free to follow us. But you have to remember to give him those reminders so he knows to stay put versus following you because naturally dogs are gonna follow your body language. So if you don't let him know to stay, he will just think it's time to walk with you and go on his walk. So then we have down. Down means lay down and stay. So this is a down stay command. It's not get off of me from, for jumping. If he jumps, we're just gonna correct that with a no. And then when he's not jumping, we're gonna reward that with attention, praise, petting, treats. So for down, if he doesn't listen to your command when you ask him to, this is for all of his commands, sit down, place, come. We're gonna say no, push the button, and then give him the, the command again, down. If he's still having a little trouble, We'll take his prong collar, and then instead of pulling up like we do in heel, we're going to give a slight pop down. You don't have to go all the way to the floor, but a little no down pressure. That way he knows to remember to lay down in that scenario. In different distractions, he's going to forget his command, so we need to have the leash on to remind him of what he should do. Then when we want him to stay in the down and we want to leave him, we remind him down. We walk away. Once we're done with our distraction, we always go back to him to release him from the down with the free. Free means he's done with that command. So we always go back to him because we want his down and his play state to be very strong. So we're telling him, hey, 
I'm not going to call you to me. That's come when called. That's a different exercise. I'm always going to go back to you, let you know you did a good job, reward you, and then tell you free. That's going to create a really strong stay. So then we have place. Place is a boundary stay on a bed. I like to use this when guests come over because he's still able to be a part of the fun. And all four feet have to be on the boundary. So he can stand, sit, lay down. So if he gets excited and wiggles, that's okay as long as he knows to stay on the boundary. And if he gets off, no, correction, place. He knows to stay on place. And then when he's doing a good job, we put the treat on the bed when we go to reward him. So the bed is what produces the reward. So he knows that that bed is a positive zone to be on. Keep all four feet on that placemat. When we release him from this command, we always go to him, tell him he did a good job, and then tell him free. We don't free from a distance. The reason being is if we free from a distance for down or place, he is going to start assuming that we're going to release him. So if we go 10 feet away and we call him to us, he's going to get rewarded for breaking the command. So we want a really strong stay. We always go back to him, good place, and then free him versus freeing from a distance. Then we have come when called. So when you practice this with Charlie, definitely have a leash on him, especially if you're not in a fenced in area. Free, we're gonna let him roam. So he is free to sniff and explore. Then when we want him to come to us, Charlie come or just the come command. As he's running to us, we're gonna praise that action. So we are rewarding him for making the choice to come to us when we call him. Then we're gonna have him sit and we're gonna give him a physical treat. So with all the other commands, you wanna reward them often for the first few weeks that he's home to transfer the training from here to at home. But this command, you wanna reward every time for a while to create a really strong reward history with coming to us when called because it's a really important command. What a reward history is, is it's constant positive interactions for doing a certain behavior. So he's getting a positive association with coming to us when called. We do that over and over again. He's going to want to come to us all the time. So if he doesn't come to us, no, correction, come, repeat, and then when he does come to us, he still gets a reward because the correction happened out there, we are still the fun positive zone. So with all the other commands, after you give a correction, you don't immediately reward, but with come and call, this a little different because we want him to know that our space is always fun and inviting. Then we have leave it. Leave it just means don't grab that off the floor. So practice with dog safe foods or any items you don't want Charlie to grab. Drop it on the floor, tell him leave it. If he does, great, praise, reward. If not, Leave it. Leave it can be the correction term in itself. We want him to know when we say leave it, it means don't go near that item. So if you drop something and he shows interest in it, leave it. You're just going to push the button and say leave it again. So those are his commands. When you work with him, you want to have fun with Charlie, stay consistent with him, and now we're going to show you Charlie's commands.
down. Good boy. Oh, here. You don't want it? Okay. Down. Good down. Good down. Good down. Good down. Good. Good down. You want the treat? Okay. Sit down. Free? Good boy.
Okay, so let's go over the other features of Charlie's remote collar. So we know how to turn the collar on. Let's turn it off. So the collar itself, red dot, we're just gonna touch the two together. Red light means it's off, green light means it's on. So I'm gonna turn that back on for a second. Then I'm gonna show you how to turn the remote off. So the on off button in the back, we're gonna push and hold that until the screen is blank. And then we're gonna push and hold that to turn that back on. So we know the black S button is the button we're primarily going to use for Charlie. We have this red S button. This is for emergencies only. So I'm going to show you when you push the red S button, it adds 20 to the level on the screen. So it's going to double the correction level. This is for emergencies only. We have not needed this for Charlie, but you have it just in case. So for example, you're working on come when called with him. He's out exploring. We've practiced this before. He's basically a pro. Well, all of a sudden something distracts him and then he starts running towards the road. You call him to come to you. He ignores you. You try to correct with this. He's not listening. What happens is if he's chasing something, Level 20 works when he is distracted up to here. But when he's distracted up to here, 20 might not work for him. So we need to boost the level so we match his distraction or adrenaline level. So that's where you might need it. But again, we have not used this for Charlie, so we did not need it throughout training, but you have it just in case. Then over here, the T button, it is vibrate. So I use that when I turn the collar on before I put it on Charlie to vibrate it a couple times to make sure that I actually turned his collar on because it's a magnet. You can quickly tap it and then it's not on. So you want to make sure that this is on before you put it on Charlie. And then in the future down the line, once he understands the training and he's doing really well, you can use this as a warning, but I wouldn't rely on it too much in the beginning because you want him to respect the commands with you automatically and you don't want to like count to three and then he listens. You want him to listen the first time every time for right now. 
So then we have the M slash C button in the back. That changes it from momentary to continuous. You don't have to worry about that. When we used continuous, that means when we would push and hold the button instead of that quick stimulation, it would be a continuous stimulation. We use that on a lower level where we would stimulate on a very low level where Charlie could feel it and then would ask him to do a command and give him a treat. So he first associated this collar with getting rewards when he felt the stimulation. Then we have the on off button in the back. So instead of pu pushing and holding it to turn the remote off, if you tap it, he has a flashlight feature so you can see him better at night. So I recommend whenever you put this collar on Charlie, it does have to fit snug, allowing only one to two fingers under the collar because we need the contact points to make good connection with his skin so that the collar is consistent for us. I recommend putting the light facing out, that way you can see the flashlight feature. And then when you put this on Charlie, every couple of days, make sure you put it on the opposite side. This is because, again, it's kind of like wearing a watch. We want to make sure that he doesn't get a, a pressure sore from the collar. So we want to just give his neck a couple days on this side, a couple days on this side, but he should wear it every day. He can wear this 12 to 14 hours a day, take it off at night. It is waterproof, so he can go swimming with it on. You just want to make sure that once he's done swimming, you take the collar off so he can dry thoroughly. Again, it's like wearing a watch, so if you left it on all the time and moisture got in there, you could get bacteria buildup and that could lead to a skin infection. So you want to make sure you're careful with that. He can go swimming, but take it off once he's done so he can dry thoroughly. It is rechargeable. The charging port right there is right there on the remote and on the collar the charging port is under here. So let's talk about his level for a second. His level is at 20 right now. That is working for him. It gets his attention. It lets him know, hey, you need to remember what your job is here. When he goes home, this level could change. He could be more distracted at home and he needs level 25. He could be less distracted at home and he needs level 15. How to change this? This little dial right here is locked right now. We're going to push down and hold it until the 1D is flashing. Then we can turn the level down and up to where we want it. So we're going to turn it back to 20. And then we're going to lock it in place. Push down and hold until the 1D is solid. So that changes the level in case he needs it. As dogs mature over time, they usually need less of a level to understand what the boundaries are. So in here, we have his charger, which will charge both the remote and the collar at the same time. We have the original strap that it came with. I prefer the bungee quick snap because it just makes it so much easier to put on and take off. Plus we have this little bungee to make sure that it's not too tight on Charlie. If for some reason this were to break, it shouldn't. You can just replace it with a regular screwdriver and a hair tie or something like that. Then we have this little tool and these extenders. Charlie has really short hair, so you're not gonna need to put these extenders on him. But this tool right here is how you would change out the points or the connections on the collar right here if you needed to. But I don't, I don't think you would need that, but you have it just in case. The instruction manual is under here, so you can go over all the buttons in greater detail if you wanna make sure you know the collar up, down, left, right. This collar does have a two-year full warranty, so if anything happens to it, you can just contact the company and they can send you a replacement. So those are the rest of the details of his remote collar. You want to have fun, stay consistent, and let us know if you have any questions.